next door and I seem to have run out of Diet Pepsi. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> and there was more trouble at Wernham Brothers West Yorkshire plant today. Our industrial correspondent Clive Rose sends this report. The trouble erupted when a group of non-union workers attempted to pass through the picket line. A meeting of employees planned for this evening has been cancelled <laughs> following the breakdown of union and management talks. <laughs> but she did. Well, to be honest, with both of us being so busy, we just don't have time for cooking. No, no, no. We get all our stuff from Marks and Spencers because they're really so good, aren't they? Good old Marks and Sparks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, one or two to start with. Oh, well, one, I think. Oh. Hello, this is the Outer Hebrides Broadcasting Corporation, and here is what's been going on in the news. Abroad and in India, the inflation has gotten so bad that the exchange rate is now 60 G cloths to the rupee. <laughs> Racing news. And we've got pictures of the surprise winner of this year's Libyan Grand National. <laughs> All the other horses were shot at the first fence. <laughs> and we'll be meeting the man who tried to defy the laws of nature by swallowing 16 Indian curries in the one day. <laughs> and the question, are the police too heavily armed, has once again arisen after this police officer was spotted in the police canteen waiting for his dinner. <laughs> Back to politics again, and following accusations of stinking underarm tactics, MP Rosie Barnes has signed a sponsorship deal with Right Card. <laughs> Competition time now. Can you spot the three old bats in this picture? <laughs> Fashion? and we'll be having a sneaky preview of the glamorous swimwear that the beautiful people will be wearing on the beaches of the Hebrides this summer. <laughs> and I'd uh, just like to say a very special thank you to our model, the postmistress, Morg McNeil. Renko are proud to announce the exclusive Cupboard Under the Sink collection. Yes, available for the first time in one superb dust-gathering accumulation, the Toasted Sandwich Maker. <laughs> <laughs> the facial steam bar. <laughs> they come in big, impressive boxes. They all seem like great ideas. They are all totally useless. Use them once, use them twice, you might even use them three times before deciding they were a complete waste of money and put them where they belong, under the sink, never to come out again until you need to take the plug from it. But with the Renko collection, there's no need, because they come with the plugs already removed. <laughs> They're cover under the sink collection. Available in all good under sink cupboards everywhere.
，一兄弟，俺弄了条金银，你你你装的嘞，俺弄了条金银，嘟嘟嘟来着，呜，好像金银，哎，你呜，还那么的，你可就别去碰那把金金银，哎，还弄嘞，哎，黑手是你打哪里？哎，你不是上不了多少，一点上不了，一点上不了多少，你黑手在打哪里啊？你你是打的意思？你是打意思的意思的？你是打意思意思的意思？嗯。What about this drum then, Ralph? Elites, do you fancy a wee swally in here? I tell you, I tell you what, Jim Jay. I hate gaffs, I hate them. I mean, look at it, Christ. It's like drinking in Burton's window. Tell you what, we'll, 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 see, what, we'll see what the baby's like. Hey, Dull. Uh, what, what is, what's he sitting swigging out that can there? It slits. Well, at least you're honest. Uh, two points of heavy, Dull. I'd like you not to dull me. This is a non sexist bar. I wasn't asking you for sex. <laughs> Just hook up the swally. Uh, I tell you, I tell you what, James. I don't, I don't feel comfortable in. I don't feel comfortable in there. Uh, no, no. Well, I mean, look at that. Look at that. I mean, there, there, there's a door in the toilet. And... <laughs> hey, bodies in the flare. I mean. I mean, it's just getting the atmosphere, Jim. Uh, you, you know, it's, you're a snob, but it's your trouble. Uh, see me? She likes to mean I can blend in any place. Uh, excuse me for asking her that, but are you two gentlemen poofs? We're gay, yes. Hey, that's no, magic. Go no, no, no. and you your autographs. <laughs> hey, that, hey. Hey, oh, yes. Just make it out to Rab and Jamesy. Uh, We're normal, by the way. <laughs> that's your story. Excuse me, gents. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you both to leave. Oh, why is that? Is it because he's not got a tie on? A tie? He hasn't even got a shirt on. <laughs> what about we can take a hint? Don't you? That's all right. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. I'll tell you. See you, by the way. Yes. <laughs> no. I've got nothing to say to you. None. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't even waste my time yet. What up? I've got nothing to say to you. My name is Roger Cook, and I'm recording an interview with you now. What's this? What's going on? Let me alone. Now, Mr. Jacobs, you promised to travel the savings of a hundred old age pensioners. Look. Instead, you left them penniless. Look, I'm warning you. Get out of here. There is a breach of promise, and I must have an answer from you now. Look, I'm sorry. You want an answer? Right. Yeah. yeah, I'll give you an answer. I'm going to bloody kill you. Oh, Boo! Oh, no. You said you're going to kill me, instead you gave me a kicking. That is a breach of promise. I've got an answer now. Life as a newspaper reporter, and I'm sure all his colleagues at the Sun will miss him. <laughs> Harry, what? Does my bottom look all right in this dress? I look lovely. Thanks, dear. Okay. Do my bollocks look all right in these trousers? Well, we've been together for 17 years, Bernard and me. 
We haven't married. We're waiting until the time is right or until Mother dies, whichever comes first. Isn't that right, Bernard? Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. <laughs> we, uh, we still lead a very full life, though. Yes, indeed. Apart from the sex, of course. We both agree there's more to life than constant ecstasy. <laughs> For one thing, Bernard's very good with his hands, which is nice. <laughs> so he made this lovely presentation case for television set that you can see over here. Sadly, Mother mutilated the veneer with a hot mug, but we managed to conceal the carnage, did we not, Bernard? Yes, we did, Miriam, with that discreet little objet d'art. <laughs> Show them the hands, dear. Oh, right ahead. This is Mother's collection of hands. Hands loom large in our life, one way or another. This is Mother's particular favourite, hand of love, as she calls it. As you can see, Bernard has etched the word kill across the number <laughs> in a more jubilant moment. Yes, it was just after I found her at the bottom of the cellar steps, <laughs> just after she had broke her hip. <laughs> <laughs> now, naturally, Bernard did the correct thing, did you not, Bernard? Oh, yes, I rang up the estate agent to have them value the house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the roof above my head, dear landlord. Though it's 17 to a single bed, dear landlord. It never really seems chock a pluck. The pillows worn, the sheets are hot. We sleep in shifts around the clock. We're really happy with the For 45 pounds a week Fitting's guaranteed antique And quite unique If you have the appetite For romantic night by candlelight The bills to make you feel dejected Everything's been disconnected Thank you for the food we eat Dear landlord One fresh tea bag Every week Dear landlord Wash down with the sour milkshake When we break the coffee at the coffee break We'll drink to you and the money you make At the D-H-S-S-B-M-B Just a stone throw from the public WC Don't you find it kind of funny I'm worth the fortune, no, I have no money Don't own a stitch, but a major rich deal at Just a boat. She was 200 square meters of tarmac, and he just had to have her. Papal attraction. Now showing in a cinema <sighs> Hi, Dave. Why so gloomy? It's these troublesome spots again, Ron. I just can't seem to get rid of them no matter what I try. Then maybe it's about time that you seriously considered Spotto. <laughs> I've tried spot creams before, Ron, but after a few days, the spots always return. Not with Spotto, Dave. You see, the people at Spotto Products have approached the problem of troublesome spots in a revolutionary new way. A revolutionary new way, Ron? Yes, Dave. You see, unlike conventional spot creams, which attempt a virtually impossible task of permanently removing your spots, new Spotto actually encourages your spots to grow, then feeds them with a secret ingredient that makes them spread all over your face. That is revolutionary, but how will it get rid of my spots? It doesn't. But after only a few short days of growing and spreading, your spots will merge together to make one big spot. One big spot, Ron? One big spot, Dave. Just like mine. You mean, you mean... That's right. My face is one big spot. But where is the head of your spot, Ron? Conveniently out of sight, under my head, Dave. <laughs> That's all very well, but with your hat removed, isn't it just a little unsightly? Not when I wear this. The Spotter product, Spot Toupee. <laughs> 
That's really impressive, Ron. But isn't there a danger you might bump the head of your spot when you go through a doorway? Those clever people at Spotto Products have thought about that too, Dave. And that is why, absolutely free with each jar of new Spotto, you get this. The Spotto Products Spot Head Protector. Which, when placed in position of the head of my spot, gives it maximum protection. It seems those clever people at Spotto Products have thought of everything. Indeed they have, Dave. Say, Ron, can I borrow some of your Spotto cream for myself? Why, certainly, Dave. Be my guest. Thanks, Ron. You're a real pal. attention all you sinners of Satan and let me remind you that you're all a miserable bunch of heretics and heathens and that every last one of you will be cast down into the putrid pit of filth and scum where you won't even be fit to lick the hairy mucus paw of <laughs> Lucifer himself. You're all cursed with the mark of the devil, the Lord. The Lord will never forgive any of you for coming here this day. And I now declare this free kept jumbo sale open. <laughs> that I don't love you, darling. Honestly, it's just that I, I don't know what love is, what life is, what I am. I'm surrounded by a, a barrier of inhibitions. I'm full of childhood conflicts that make me unable to commit myself to you. They force me to run around with other women. I just don't know where I am. It's uh, bullshit. I know, I know. But at least it's sincere bullshit. Man, is it? See that. <laughs> for 15 years, I did oven for that. Cooked, cleaned, changed it, straw, the real <laughs> whack. Waste of bloody time. <laughs> I went to a sex therapist, you know. I say, see where sex, where sex is minging. <laughs> On my honeymoon, I got one orgasm. <laughs> And that was when I get body serves at Glasgow Airport coming back to Alicante. Oh, God. He was a market man, too. Oh, really filthy. See, the first time we slept together, we got undressed in the dark, right? I heard this funny noise. I said, what are you doing? Are you in a packet of crisps? He says, no, I'm taking off my underpants. I thought, I thought, Christ, no class. Oh, no, like me. Oh, I'm a right yuppie now, all right. I get flung out a wine bar for using bad body language. <laughs> Obviously my fault. It was just frustration, you know. You get fed up being in your jack. I tried going to one of these singles clubs, but it gave me the creeps. Oh, I mean, they try to tell you that there are no meat markets, right? But when they call the joint the Ponderosa, <laughs> who's kidding who? Oh, and all the men trying to appear that lovable. Oh, makes you spew so it <laughs> Oh, shuffling about with buttons missing after their jackets and scorch marks on their chinos, you know. <laughs> just, just so you'll feel sorry for them and give them a swift podger. Oh. <laughs> no way, Jose. Go sniff a lamppost. <laughs> How would you like it done, then? Uh, could you perhaps uh, keep it off my face, but uh, keep the length at the back? We'll try our best. Do you want me to just lay it at the back for you? Could you? Okay. I'll just raise you up a bit. Oh. 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 For a 78 Avenger. That's right. 
I'm lucky to find a serviceable set of them, sir. Tell you up. Tell you up there. Right, thanks very much. You may be lucky. Started seeing a psychiatrist. Last week was pretty bad, but this week's even worse. Mam, it was. Now, <clears throat> all my life, Mam have told me that I'd been adopted. And then yesterday, she told me the awful truth. I wasn't adopted. <laughs> She's my real Mam. <laughs> and all those years, she made me go to the orphanage. <laughs> I was the only one there who went home for dinner. <laughs> I've never even met my father. He's always been out whenever I've gone home. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the psychiatrist said, relax, Shadel, and I'll ask you a few questions. Were you bottle-fed? Yes, I was. Bottles of lemonade, because there's money back on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, oh. And when did you start talking? Not until I was 12. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. I started talking when I was two, but it wasn't until 12 that anybody listened. <laughs> And then the psychiatrist wanted to know anything I could remember, really. <clears throat> well, the very first thing that I could remember is just after I was born, when a doctor sat on my head. <laughs> he thought there was a cushion. <laughs> actually, actually, no, I was upside down for the first month. I had a nappy on my head. And he'd look at my bottom and say, oh, you've got his mother's face. <laughs> <laughs> he's smiling. <laughs> oh, no, he's not. <laughs> Serves him right. Anyhow, and I can still remember <coughs> when they'd got it in the right place. Mam, changing my nappy. Well, she only did it once, after all. Needed doing, though. And funnily enough... <laughs> funnily enough, it was immediately after she'd done that that I started walking. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Had a bit of trouble with bed wetting, too. The problem was that my bedroom was next door to the bathroom, and, well, after a few drinks, Uncle Denzil just... Went into the wrong room, really. <laughs> and you know, you know how children have imaginary friends? Uh, I had imaginary friends. Mum would say, Shadel, you think you've got lots of friends, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, you haven't. <laughs> it's all in your imagination. Perhaps she loves me. Even if she is my real mum. I remember, I remember somebody told her that a vest would keep me nice and warm on cold winter mornings. So, every winter morning, she'd give me a boiled vest for breakfast. <laughs> Can't remember anything else, really. The psychiatrist said, amnesia. That's right. I remember having amnesia. My name's Mandy Minto, the famous wild child. And let me tell you, I am wrecked. <laughs> I was nightclubbing till five this morning and I've got my O-level needlework at nine. I like needlework. This time I've been making a rubber dress. Anyway, I was the first wild child to strip off at Stringfellows. Thing is, I forgot I was still wearing my vest and gym knickers. Which is <laughs> why I didn't make the news of the world. Anyway, I used to go with my friend Susan. She bonked an old person once. He was 25. <laughs> so I went straight out and bonked a really old person. He's 26. I said, beat that, Susan. Neck were bloody filly. <laughs> anyway, uh, my parents were both dead. I think they should be told. <laughs> no, they're all right, really. They just worry a lot. I mean, sometimes they'll sit up till two or three in the morning waiting for me to go out. <laughs> anyway, 
I've had two heart attacks and one nervous breakdown between them over me. Maybe I'm just sentimental, but I think that's really sweet. <laughs> that's two years ago when I was young and impetuous and 13. <laughs> we used to hang out with Bill Wyman, Chris Quentin and Andrew Ridgely, looking for sex and drugs and more sex. <laughs> what an idiot. Should have been hanging around with Frank Boff. <laughs> Fifty-seven. <laughs> 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 